What up, guys? James from Bolt Bros here. Want to go over all the prospects the Chargers have had meetings with recently. This is the second time doing this and giving you guys a recap of the new players the Chargers have chatted with for meetings for the NFL draft. And even some of these players we've met with now more than two times. So let's get into it, guys. Bolt Bros, let's go. Bolt Bros! All right, guys, once again, appreciate all the love and support. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you've not. Throw some comments in below. We always love to hear from you and hear what you guys are thinking about some of these prospects and maybe some of the prospects I missed too. But these are a couple that I do have. So let's jump into it. So obviously Malik Willis, excuse me, Malik Neighbors. Man, Malik Neighbors is an absolute stud. We had a private meeting with him. He was in LA recently looking at some real estate, by the way, too, after his meeting, I assume. Um, six foot, two, uh, 201 pounds, four, three, five speed guys. He's a burner. This guy basically is a yak monster is a lightning in a bottle, a guy that could be an absolute dynamic receiver for this team. 89 catches last year, 1,569 yards, 14 touchdowns, an average of 17.6 yards per catch. This guy is an absolute stud works well as a wide receiver downfield and in the slot and does well on 50, 50 catches. All around, a great player all around. I would love to be able to have Malik Neighbors as our wide receiver at pick five. You ain't gonna get him, he ain't gonna get past pick five, pick six, maybe at the latest. He's going to be a top 10 pick at least. There is some red flags that the people are saying that he might not do well in LA, but we will see what happens um, if he does end up coming out to LA. Um, also, just another note. Charger scouts were at LSU Pro Day. All teams were in attendance there. Joe Ortiz and Sanjay Lau was there. So our wide receiver coach and GM were there. So you got to think of all the players of LSU, but also you got to just really think about the wide receivers. They were looking at Malik Neighbors and probably Brian Thomas Jr. So keep an eye out for them, guys. Keep an eye out for them. Now we got also... Trey Knox, tight end. Uh, basically, the night before his pro day, Chargers did meet with him, had like a dinner with him of some sort. 6'3", 240, late day three type player for you. He's basically a very physical tight end, straight line speed tight end that does well getting downfield and does his best with contested catches. Pretty good tape if you really watch him. This guy does a great job of basically getting open, finding ways to take get these contested catches, does a good job of moving his body all around to be able to be positioned, to be able to be able to catch the ball. Um, really good. Once again, Chargers are looking to get physical. That's the whole mantra to this team that they're trying to develop. This guy could be a physical addition to this team late in the draft. So keep an eye out for him. Moving on. Now, this one's kind of a little bit broader, but I mean, we did also meet with one of these players uh, privately. Uh, O-line coaches at the University of Washington Pro Day, working with the O-line. So Mike Devlin was there. Also defensive line coach Mike Elston and West Coast area scout Chris Hobbs was in attendance. So there was a lot of eyes there on the D-line, the O-line, and in general, a lot of the players in Washington. Um, we did meet with number 55 over there. Is it Troy Fen? Fen Nantu, I for Fentanu. <laughs> Anyways, Troy, we did meet privately with the Chargers and probably a first rounder, more or less. Physical guy, big guy all around. He's not going to be a pick five kind of guy. He's going to be a guy more in kind of the top 15, top 20 ish kind of area. So at five, it would be a stretch to go with him. Ironically, he's got 55 on his jersey. That's kind of ironic. But he is a guy that we have met with privately so this would be kind of more of a scenario if we go after him it'd be later in the draft um also you got to think in mind with the o-line and our o-line coach mike devlin working with some guys roger rosegarden right here number 73 kind of more of a fifth round pick kind of guy he might be kind of one of those dudes that they will look at later in the draft too also we got to think roman adunze too maybe that's another reason why we we're out there i mean we had a, three of our coaches out there at the same time so there's definitely some guys that are keeping their eyes on there. Moving on. So this one is an interesting one. Mike Novinsky is basically a center for Kansas. At, and at the pro day, we basically met him there. Converted from a tight end to center. 
has played very well as a center. He even stated recently in an interview, I'd much rather play center than tight end all day. And he's done it really, really well playing a center. So at Buffalo, he's a part of the 2019 O-line starting 13 games in a, at center. The entire O-line only allowed eight sacks all season plus had a school record of 3,256 yards rushing in 2020. Buffalo shorted season basically uh, came second in the league for rushing yards and only giving up one sack in seven games. That is phenomenal. Now, 2021, he didn't give up a sack personally and a penalty, which is great. And the entire O-line only allowed 16 sacks for the season. Just to give you a comparison, the year before, Kansas gave up in 2020, 43 sacks. That is a big difference. This guy is a difference maker for the O-line. Once again, this is the absolute cornerstone to an offensive line, a guy that could create an O-line with a center and a nucleus and allows everybody else to do their job and do well at it. Amazing. 2022, no sacks were allowed and only two quarterback hits with the entire O-line only allowing 25 sacks. 2023, Kansas O-line allowed 16 sacks all season. They had a great O-line, and I really feel very strongly Mike Novinsky could be a phenomenal guy for a center down the road in the draft. So keep an eye on him. I know the Chargers really need a center for the future. This could be the guy, in my opinion, that could be a phenomenal pickup for this team. Moving on. So here you go. This is the second time we've met with Edrin Cooper, Texas. So we were at the pro day with them. You assume that they had conversations a little bit with him. This is a private workout, and plus, they had a top 30 visit. This guy is an absolute solid, solid linebacker. Great versus run and pass, 4-5-1 speed, can cover running backs, tight ends, and effective as a Tampa 2-type defense uh, scheme, too. Very, very confident all around. and does great in the spy, too. Effective as a pass rusher, getting 10 Sacks his senior year and is known as a Swiss Army knife. This guy is a stud. Kind of reminds me a little bit in the sense of um, our guy that we uh, our, our guy that we ended up just getting um, Denzel Perryman. Kind of a Swiss Army knife kind of guy. I think that's really what we want to get is this physical guy that knows how to be able to read and react really quickly. I do very feel feel very very strongly that Edrin Cooper could be a guy that we even target in second round. I will say that. I, maybe it's a bold prediction. He will be a guy that I think we'll really look at in second round. So very solid uh, meeting all around. Moving on. Now, here you go. Look at this guy. Lautu, Lautu. I think it's how you say it. Lautu, Lautu, Lautu. <laughs> I can never say this guy's name correctly. I'm going to butcher it. But he did meet recently, as you can see, with Jim Harbaugh here. Pretty cool. Threw it up on his Instagram. Awesome, awesome player all around. Uh, DN with the Charger or with UCLA, probably a long shot to make the team because he will kind of be one of those top 20-ish type areas, maybe even top 10 in what I'm seeing in some mocks that he could potentially get there. Now, there's some injury issues all around with him. He did have some neck issues and everything, but bottom line, he has a great motor, motor he has an awesome, awesome motor and, and strength to get through blocks and utilize his hands well with various ways to get past blocks. Big issue is his neck, once again, but people are comparing him to TJ Watt. That's nice company to be a part of. So keep an eye out for him. Once again, this would probably be a, a pick that we get a second pick of some sort in first round, or we kind of scoop back quite a bit and trade back in the first round and get a nice haul all around. So keep an eye out for him. Moving on. Man. More I look at this guy, Isaac Garendo, Louisville, our running back. Look at that guy. He looks like he's stoked. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, buddy. Going to the house, baby. Man, he's got speed. This guy is awesome. 433 speed, 6'1, 225. Big guy with speed. That's dangerous. This guy could be extremely physical for us all around and very, very good vision all around. Runs fast with high end speed, solid blocker in the pass game. And a good pass catcher. He actually does a phenomenal job. Kind of reminds me sometimes of like Austin Eckler, the way he plays the pass game. He does a great job of catching the pass and is great with the ball in his hands. Um, could be very, very deadly with the pass game with his speed. Solid vision that could find gaps and accelerate. Kind of a straight line speed kind of guy, but not much wiggle in his game. Um, really solid running back. I think this would be a great pickup for us as one of the running back candidates in the draft. 
keep an eye out for Isaac Grendo. I loved his game. Now, here we go. We, we all know this guy. We've chatted quite a bit about him. Blake Corum. You know who he is, running back from Michigan. Top 30 visit per interview on Eis uh, Rich Eisen show. He has come back. This is the second time that we have met with him. We know who he is, guys. Private workout at Pro Day also. This is the second meeting with him. Coming back together to go meet with Jim Harbaugh and his old crew. 5'8", 214, running back. Also had 1,245 yards last year. 27 rushing touchdowns is phenomenal. One receiving touchdown on 16 catches. Combine, he did run for 4 Five three forty yard dash did bench well and got twenty seven reps. He was pushing, does well with the lane development and works well towards opening on the O line. So he's very patient in that sense and knowing where the O line opening will be. Does absorb second level contact and does well recognizing north south type runs and does well also in blitz coverage too. So he does a very good job all around as a running back. Smaller stature kind of guy, but a lot of people love him. Once again, it's a Michigan guy. I expect a couple Michigan guys to be drafted on this team to be able to keep continuity to the system and understand how Jim Harbaugh works and teach the other guys how he works. So good good choice on that one. People are saying second round, third round. We'll see where it lands with this. All right. Dallas Turner, defensive end, Alabama, pre-draft meeting. So we did meet with him personally. 6'4", 251 pounds. Force four seven speed from the combine. He was blazing fast. Explosive traits has the ability to keep pressure on the quarterback with a high motor to pursuit. Love to see that. Does well with the run defense and can beat initial blocks. Well, in 2023, had 10 sacks, two forced fumbles. This guy's a menace on the field. Do we really need another defensive end? Well, I've done a mock draft where I did have him as our top pick. People kind of went ballistic over it, but look, why would you not want to have four top quality defensive ends, and especially if we have a chance where some of those guys might get injured? Why not create a system where you think ahead and also create just an absolute chaotic situation at D-line? Thule, Mac, Bosa. What about Dallas Turner on that line? You could create a lot of interesting defensive kind of like plays, stunts, all these different things that you could do with that. That would be interesting to watch, guys. Keep an eye out for it. Who knows? Pick five might be a stretch, but not too far off. Let me know on your thoughts on that, guys. Moving on. Now we got uh, Savion Jackson from North Carolina State. A defensive line, D-end, 6'2", 290. Did kind of have an injury shortened seasons in 21 and 22, but did have a 2023 mostly healthy season and a of course, his best season. Did have 40 tackles, 5.5 tackles for a loss, two and a half sacks, strong run defender where he finished 80.6 overall grade versus the run. Does have a good bend for getting outside rush, looking more like a day three type pick, but this guy looks pretty good. I liked watching some of his highlights. He seemed like he had a good high, high motor and really gets after it all around. So really, really like what I see from him. And remember, Bradley Chubb did come from NC State, so maybe we'll get a little shade of that from him, too. So we'll see where he kind of lands. Kind of that guy that I think could be a great late-round pick, great addition, high-value type situation. So once again, guys, these are who I have so far in that we have confirmed you know, meetings with him. A lot of guys kind of look at. I think there's even some other cornerbacks that have kind of come around, too, that we have met with, too. But this is kind of who I have right now. I just want to emphasize these guys and see what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments below which one of these guys would make the most sense for us, which guys might be a little bit of a reach at five. What should we do with some of these guys if they're going to fit physically for us all around? I just want to hear from you, your thoughts all around. If there's anybody else I missed, let me know. Once again, guys, appreciate it, guys. All the love and support. Once again, James from Bolt Bros. Let's go.